Hey again, this is Will Ruddick with the Village Market Simulator series. <clears throat> Another installment here, and today I'm going to go over um, a hierarchical economic model that might look a little bit familiar to some folks. Um, we're going to start with uh, red dots being agents here. These are people or businesses or uh, entities of some sort. Um, and then the blue um, squares here, rectangles, are going to be contracts or what we'll call pools that connect the various red dots together. So this top red dot is going to be an issuer somehow of U.S. dollars. Either it's a very wealthy person or it's the government. And then these would be subcontractors or just high-level contractors that have an agreement here in blue with the state okay and then these guys down here would be subcontractors to the main contractors these would be like sub subcontractors to this contractor and so on these would be sub sub subcontractors and when the this this agreement the way it works is really quite simple if um, the subcontractor puts in a certain amount of we're going to call them vouchers um, these represent the work of the of the contractor um, then the state will put in some dollars, right? So it's essentially like a little escrow swap pool, and we'll call them pools. Um, and they're going to go through some interactions with each other. And on the right over here, we're going to show what the network of these vouchers look like. And we'll consider the U.S. dollar a voucher as well. So the vouchers are uh, representations of commitments or promises. So if I step through here, they're going to do an interaction, so in green. So this this contractor is actually interacting through this series of contracts to interact with or, or exchange with this uh, contractor up here, right? So this might be this contractor uh, giving money to this contractor, or this contractor giving money to this contractor, uh, for instance. And because there's a relationship between them now, they've connected. This graph over here is going to show their vouchers. So these these little things in black that are inside the contracts. That's what is represented over here. And so you can see, you know, V8, uh, V10, and V1, these are the vouchers, right, um, of these of these contractors over here. So there's, they're in a relationship with each other now. The rest of them haven't yet traded yet. So if I run this forward, just let it run for a while, eventually this is just gonna do random trades throughout the network until they all have some sort of relationship with each other. Let's, let's just let that finish up. Do, do, do. There's still one remaining there that doesn't want to uh, have a relationship with the others. Well, let's just pause it for a second. Okay, so we end up with a network. Let's put that one again. There we go. We end up with a network that, if we look at the relationships between all of the value propositions or the offers, there's the main offer of the US dollar, that's the central node or the um, network token, you could call it, of the network. And that's connecting the rest of these branches all together, okay? And the, the distance here, the, the reason they're clustering is the number of trades that have gone through those branches. So most everything is being routed. You know, if any of these, this pillar here wants to trade or connect with uh, people or businesses on the other side, they need to go through the dollar. Okay. This could also look very similar to these being uh, different countries, right? And if you want to trade between countries, let's say in East Africa, between like uh, Kenya and Tanzania, you have to route through the, the US dollar, uh, which is quite silly. Um, so, so now what are we going to do? Um, because we've, we've created this kind of um, uh, simple simulation of an economy here, We've done it in a way such that these guys are actually issuing their own promises, their own vouchers, kind of like loyalty points or gift cards. And we're considering the U.S. dollar one of those two. So if all these actors are issuing some form of commitments, and those commitments can be stored in contracts like these pools, well, we can potentially create a, a pool that contains many of these commitments down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that and step forward. So we're going to create... A contract here that's holding something like eight or nine of these um, commitments from these you know fifth level uh, contractors right fourth and fifth level um, and and what that's gonna do is gonna it's gonna open up a bunch of different paths so because some of their commitments are existing in this large escrow account here they can now start stepping through that. So if this person wants to trade with this person over here, he no longer has to go through the US dollar network. He can find a shorter path, a cheaper path, actually, uh, and quicker path 
to interact with them through this pool. So the idea of pooling, you know, it goes back to some of the previous videos where communities can come together, put their commitments into a common pool. Um, this might be done through oathing, you know, traditionally. Um, and then they can draw on that pool. So this person is drawing on that pool to pull out some vouchers that enable them to interact with the rest of the pool. And so if we just keep stepping that through, we can see that for these guys at the bottom, it's much, much more beneficial for them to be able to interact through these lower pools. So if we just let that run for a while, and we kind of look at what's the effect of this. I mean, things can still route through the dollar, but it becomes uh, more like a, a competitive environment, in other words, where... Um, we're entering into something that's much more polycentric. So instead of the center of this diagram being the US dollar now, it'll start to morph and change over time. So if we can pause it here, let's look at what the network is now looking like. So instead of having this one central node as US dollar, there's really no central nodes anymore, right? You end up with a cluster here. That's probably this cluster that's that's within, within this uh, pool that has now reshaped the network. So this is a much more resilient and organic shape. So if we let that play through, and we look at points at which uh, the US dollar stops being available, which happens where I am quite seasonally, we can actually uh, turn off some of these US dollar access switches here, right? And look at what happens. Well, you still end up with a network that is surviving uh, lack of US dollars, right? And so that's that's kind of the, the point of you know mutual aid systems often there's no currency involved at all. It's actually a merger of a whole bunch of people's commitments into common pools. And this doesn't have to be the only pool. There could be many of these. Um, even some of these uh, vouchers could be mutual credit systems. Like this, this group together could have a mutual credit amongst them. This could be routing between all kinds of different um, uh, types of arrangements. And also, because this ma matrix now exists, you can also do... Um, obligation clearing. So if there's debts between members of this group that can clear automatically, that's also possible. So there's a lot possible with this very, very simple formulation of vouchers and pools and agents. Um, drawing a lot from promise theory here in terms of looking at how to build trust in these networks. So hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.